As we are about to build a RESTful web API using ASP.NET Core, let's first understand what is REST. REST or Representational State Transfer is a style of architecture for building web services. REST is a set of principles that define how web services should be designed and interact with each other. At its core, REST is based on the concept of resources. A resource is anything that can be identified and manipulated through a web service. In a RESTful architecture, resources are accessed through URLs. Each URI identifies a specific resource and HTTP verbs are used to perform actions on these resources. For example, a GET request can be used to retrieve a resource while a POST request can be used to create a new resource. REST also emphasizes a stateless client server model. This means that the server should not store any client state between these requests and the client should provide all necessary information with each and every request. This allows for scalability and readability in the system as the server can handle multiple requests simultaneously without needing to maintain client state. ASP.NET Core provides a powerful and flexible platform for building RESTful APIs with its support for HTTP verbs, routing, model binding and response types, ASP.NET Core makes it easy to implement RESTful APIs that are both scalable and maintainable. Let's also understand HTTP verbs. HTTP verbs define the type of actions that can be performed on a resource identified by a URI. Some common examples of HTTP verbs are GET, POST, PUT, DELETE, PATCH and OPTIONS. Out of these, the most common ones are GET, POST, PUT and DELETE and these are the ones that we are going to later implement in our web API. Let's see some common use cases of these HTTP verbs and how they identify actions on these different URIs. If you see the first highlighted action, which is pointing to yourapi.com forward slash API forward slash employees, this URI will be used along with the HTTP get keyword to get the list of all employees. This is the URL convention that we use when we have to get a resource. If you look at the second row, we are reusing some of the bits from the first row. So we are pointing to yourapi.com forward slash API forward slash employees, which gives you the list of all the employees, but then you want to get a single employee by its unique identifier. And hence you are passing the identifier after the employees. So clearly, get can be used in two different ways. One, to get all the employees and two, to get a single employee by their unique identifier. Then we also have the post HTTP verb. The URL for the post HTTP verb is similar to the first one, which is the get all employees. So in this URI, the URI is also pointing to the employees resource which is yourapi.com forward slash API forward slash employees. Now, because this is an post HTTP verb, it means that we are using this to create a new resource, in this case, creating a new employee. After that, we have the put HTTP verb, which is used to update a resource. So similar to the get, we first have to use a URI that uniquely identifies a single employee or a single resource. Then we will use the HTTP put keyword to treat this as an update action. And finally, the most common HTTP verb that is used is delete as well. So in the delete, the convention of the URL is similar. So it's going to a single resource or a single employee and we are using the HTTP delete verb so that we can identify this action as a delete action.